Hi everybody, David here again. Um, I won't say this will be a quick video. Um, I'm going to do a different video today. It's nothing to do with beer actually. Uh, about four or five years ago, the very first video that I put on uh, line for YouTube was using a pork pie dolly for the first time. I've had going on nearly 11,000 views on that, but it is five years ago. Uh, but I always wanted to do a full video of making pork pies from start to finish because that one just showed me really making the casing of the pie. So I'm going to attempt today to do the full lot from start to finish. Well, just snippets of each bit, otherwise it would go on about 10 hours. So um, the pork pies, something I've always loved. Uh, brought up with them up here in Yorkshire uh, and the reason I started making them was quite simple the local butchers closed and I couldn't buy a decent pork pie anywhere so I just thought well I'll make me own and that was about five years ago so um, let's get on with it the first stage is uh, mincing pork shoulder which my uh, wife's doing um, I'm not going through amounts I'm just showing you the process I'm not giving you recipes and weights uh, anybody who wants it to put a comment I suppose uh, I could add them later but first of all we course mincing the um, shoulder pork you're supposed to really add a bit of belly pork in but uh, I haven't got any belly pork so yeah we're just mincing this uh, this shoulder pork. I've cut it up into chunks and uh, we'll catch you up at the next stage. Right, we've uh, minced the pork now. Can you get a, a view of that? It's nicely minced. If I left this now uh, and put my seasoning in, which is, goes in a little bit later, that's my seasoning, I could put that in now. But I would have uncured pork and, and the colour when it would bake would be like a grey colour. Now that's, some people like that in a pork pie, it's supposed to be a proper one. I like pink meat, so when it's cooked, the pork pie is cooked, it's pink. So I have some curing salts, which I've measured out. You can buy these online. And what I do, I just sprinkle it over the meat, like that. And this will ensure that the meat is cured and so when it's cooked it will be pink. I once gave a pork pie to a bloke and, and it was uncured so it was grey and he didn't like it. Well he didn't pay me for it anyway so it, it didn't really matter. But I, I must admit I do like uh, a pink meat so I cure mine. You just buy the salts anyway. Uh, I think there's about 11 grams per kilo goes in. So mix it thoroughly and then what you've got to do is leave that meat a good 20 minutes in the fridge, keep it nice and chilled uh, and it, that'll do its work. So I'll catch up with you next stage. Okay, we've got the uh, meat in the fridge now with the curing salts. They can stay there for 20 minutes. What we're going to do now is get on with this, if you can film this. Uh, we're going to make the uh, pastry. It's called uh, hot water crust pastry. In here I've got a mixture of hard uh, flour, uh, like a bread flour. And I've got plain flour. And I've got some salt. As I say, I'm not going over the recipe. And I've got some lard that I've weighed out and... Um, chopped up and I'm going to just put that in and what I'm going to do now the old-fashioned way I'm not using a blender or a, what they do I'm going to use the tips of my fingers as my grandmother taught me back in the 1960s uh, to rub this fat into the flour which will take me about five minutes or so I'm not filming it all uh, we'll, we'll get on to the next stage soon but just use light fingers. Uh, Paul Otherwood isn't the only one who can do this. You know, there's plenty of people up and down the country can do just as well as him. Uh, it's just they don't get the same amount of money that he gets. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to mix it well, and then I'll uh, I'll get back to you uh, at the next stage. 
Okay, I've uh, mixed a lot into this uh, strong white flour and the plain flour and the salt. Uh, the next stage, uh, I've got some lard in here which I'm going to melt and I've got a jug of water and milk. Now you can put just water in but I like to mix it half and half because I like a creamier texture. And by the way, I have washed my hands during um, each process. Uh, I don't want to be getting sacked. Not that the BBC employ me of course. But uh, I don't get vast sums of money like they do. Um, so I'm going to very gently now melt that. I'm going to be stirring all the time. Just as it comes to the boil, I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to pour it back into my uh, flour uh, mixture. So I'll get back to you in a minute or two. Now, are you tell me when you pressed it. I pressed it. Okay, that's just come to the boil. You don't overboil this, you don't want to burn it. I've stirred it constantly. And now, all you do is very hot, but I haven't burnt it, I've stirred it all the time. Just pour all that mixture into your flour. I've turned the uh, cooker off now. To start with, obviously, you're going to have to use this wooden spoon that I've been stirring it with to mix it in. Uh, otherwise, you <laughs> you would basically scald your hands, which isn't a good idea, is it? Uh, but you've got to get your hands in there at some point. Well, very quickly, actually. So give it a good mix. It'll cool down a bit. Give it a good, uh, good stir. That's it. And then, basically, if you've got asbestos hands, get them in. Actually, it's not that hot, I wouldn't be. It's cooled down now, you see. I mean, it's hot, but it's not scalding hot. That's quite safe for me, that. Right, it's cooling it down. And now what you've got to do is just keep uh, mixing it with your hands and kneading it. So basically what you need to do is get it out of this bowl onto a floured surface, which I just happen to have some flour. Uh, so I'll get it onto there and get all the bits out, press it in. I'll give it a good five to ten minutes knead now. Some say I don't over knead it, but I like to give it about five to ten minutes. Really mixed it well and it'll eventually go into a nice round ball and all be mixed. It's quite hot but not hot enough to burn me. Don't matter if you pick a bit of flour up, that's what it's there for, stop it sticking. So I'm going to carry on doing this about five or six minutes more. I'm then going to put it back in this bowl into the fridge and leave it for an hour. So I'll get back to you a bit later on. Right, I've uh, kneaded that pastry and it's still quite hot. You've got to uh, leave it for a, at least an hour in the fridge. But it can stand a couple hours for me. I can always warm it back up. Uh, the pork has cured for 20 minutes. So now I'm going to add the seasoning and put it back in the fridge. Yeah, that can stay. It could stand all night, that. But I'll probably leave it an hour. So this is my seasoning. I'll not go over how much there is, but it's basically uh, sea salt, white pepper, there's some nutmeg, some mace, and the green stuff is uh, sage, which I've grown in my garden. Um, and I've dried it. Or should I say my wife did that bit. And uh, so it's, it's fresh. It isn't fresh sage, but it, it is homegrown stuff. So basically I'm going to Give it a good layer of seasoning, like that. Now I'm going to get my hands in. You've got to get your hands in. You've got to work quick because you want to keep this meat as chilled as possible. So oh, I'll just speed it up a bit. Keep layering it. I'm only doing it for camera's sake. So it's all in. It's my, it's my own uh, seasoning, this. Um, you can buy... Uh, seasoning professional as professionally made seasoning i once did but when i tried it it wasn't as good as mine in my humble opinion so i do my own now you don't have to add uh, sage or mace or, or nutmeg but you've got to add salt and white pepper 
so give it a good mixing and when I've done that a few minutes I'm going to just put it back in the fridge and it can stand there as long as uh, it needs to there's no time limit I could stand it till tomorrow if I wanted but I'm, I'll probably give it a good hour anyway so that all the seasoning starts to mingle in with the meat so I'll get back to you in a bit then Yeah, we're going. Um, next stage then, uh, my wife's gone, so I'm going to have to uh, film it like this. That's been in the fridge a couple hours now. What I do next, I cut uh, a piece off, about one, uh, 75 to 185 grams. Uh, and basically, I put it on a flour surface and I just roll it out really slowly to get it flat, like this. This is how I do it. I'm not saying you can't do it other ways. Now I've done it like that. Now here are the pork pie dollies. It's just three round pieces of wood. I bought these at Mel Mowbray five years ago. I have done videos where I show using that one. Uh, but today, and I think I've got one where I'm using the small one, but today I'm just using the middle size one. So, uh, just let me flour it. You've got to flour it, because if you don't, you'll really have trouble getting it off when you've uh, shaped it. So there you are. I place it there. You can see this in more detail on the other videos if you go back. And then I press till the pastry just starts to rise up try and keep it don't matter if it cracks because it's very pliable this dough then what I do I, I pick it up and I just feel the bottom now I think that's just a little bit too thick so I just press it a bit more but that's enough I then smooth it round the flour put my thumbs on the top there and it's just like making a pot at school I mean, I was useless at school as a potter. And with even presses of the of your hand, you just go round. I mean, I'll, I'll just do this one, uh, just to show you. And you carefully uh, try and raise the pastry so that it's equal thickness all the way around. It, it's, that's the difficult bit. Um, I mean, you can use a a case to put them in you know like a bun case but this is the old-fashioned way um, so yeah just bring it up and try and keep it nice and even smooth even and smooth and if you think it's a bit fat at the bottom I just press slightly that's just about right now and then what I like to do then just roll it like that that just smooths the indentations you made with your fingers. So that's that. Now comes the difficult bit, which I failed on last time I did a video, about five years since. That's getting it off. Where is it? A pallet knife. Oh, here we are. Got a pallet knife here. This is the bit I don't like. You've got to just go around the edges like that. Try and get it off in one. Last time I did it, I think I took about three attempts. Don't worry about cracks in the side, we'll get them repaired. Oh, it came off easy that time. Then, I just like to get my fingers in, well, my thumbs, and just go round and just make sure, feel it all the way around. Some parts might be thinner, but don't worry. I mean, you know, we're not uh, professionals, but it's good enough. That's a bit fat, that bit, so I'm just pressing it to make it more even with the others. That's actually a nice casing. So look, I'm going to put my meat in there, but not on this shot. I'm going to make all the others now. Now you'll notice a bit of a crack there, but you can pinch them together. And we're going to put lids on and stuff, so it'll all be pinched in. And then what I do, I get a baking tray. And I just put them on there. That's my first casing. 
So I'll get back to you when I've done them all and we'll put the meat in. Okay. I've got uh, six of these all together. I'll show you later. But the six. What we do now, we get some meat. It's here. It's uh, get a disc of meat. Just you can always take it out if it's too big. Shake it into a nice little patty and place it in. If it's not big enough, which that one isn't, just get another bit more. Not quite enough that one. You can always take it out. You can't uh, really go wrong on this stage if you think it's too big. And the idea is you've got to press it in into the casing. See that? so that there's no air trapped at the sides. And if you don't think there's enough, just press a bit more in. I think there might be enough for you. <laughs> yeah, there'll be plenty of meat in that one. I've got, uh, I've made six. I've plenty of uh, uh, dough left, pastry, should I say. Uh, I'm going to make something else later, but not filming that. I'm going to make another pie, a mincemeat and onion, uh, with what I've got left. Then, uh, I've already rolled out a disc for a top. Where are we? Get some little brush and some water. Just brush around the edges. And you can bend it out to fit, press it out to fit, it's very pliable this stuff. Get it in there and real just work it round the edges like that and move that out of your way. My wife usually does like this but as I say she's gone. I think probably running my grandson to nursery or something. I mean they're not, every pie is different, this is what I like about these. Every pie is different. Just make it a seal. Like this. I'm not going to actually leave it like that. You can bend it over. Make it a nice seal. I'm doing this one quickly. Uh, just to show you. Make sure it's sealed like that. These are going to stand in the fridge for about four or five hours. I'm going to bake them tonight because they've got to stiffen up again in the cold. I've warmed them up by moving them about in my hands. So this is a quick one. Now then, where is it? I want some scissors. Should have had those ready, shouldn't I? And just snip round the top. Just to even it a bit. Don't worry if there's a bit of a gap. We can always fill, seal that up. And then I just sort of pinch it together like that every so often. There we are. But there we have it. Just um, got to make a hole in it. I get a chopstick. I make a hole because the steam's to escape. And I've got to jelly them when they've been cooked. So that's basically it. There's the hole. That will now go in the fridge for about four or five hours. Um, and I'll bake them tonight, which hopefully I'll show you on the video. So I'll get on then with the uh, rest of them and get back to you later. Well, I've had a couple hours in the fridge. I've just glazed them, uh, I don't want to tip it too far, they'll fall off. I've just glazed them with beaten egg. Uh, and they're going to bake now in the oven, so I'll get them in. There you are, there you go. Nearly half past three. Uh, they're going to have half an hour at 200 degrees Celsius. And then I'll turn the temperature down after half an hour to about 175, 170 and cook them for a further one hour. 
I will check them about 10 minutes to go, make sure they're not burning. If I think they're cooked, I'll bring them out. But I don't usually go over that one and a half hours. So that's it. Uh, I'll just watch the time now for uh, another hour and a half. Well, I've just got them out of the oven, um, all six pies. They've had, as I said, half an hour at 200 and an hour at 175. Um, it's glazed on the top, as you can see, with the egg. Uh, so really what we've got to do now, uh, one more job only. I'll just make these holes a bit bigger. Uh, I've got to leave them for about, what, an hour and a half to cool down. And then I'm going to uh, put jelly in them, which keeps the meat moist. moist. Just That egg's just filled the... There we are. So I'll get back to you uh, and show you a few shots of making the jelly. I'm not using pig's trotters today, pig's feet, to make the jelly. That's the traditional way. You boil the, to a couple of pig's feet up for about four or five hours, and then it, it just jelly them with that. But I'm not doing that. I have done in the past, but today I'm just going to use uh, gelatine water, maybe a few cloves and that. I'll show you that in a minute or two. Well, here we are at the next little stage. Um, I'm just boiling some water up with half a red onion and about mm, four or five cloves in there. It's just come to the boil now. So I'm going to simmer it for half an hour or so. Then I'll strain it all off so we've just got the liquid. Then I'm going to mix three teaspoons of this gelatine powder. Um, with three teaspoons of cold water, make a paste. Then I will add it to the hot liquid, which it should be flavoured by then. Uh, stir it, give it a good mix in. And then I'm going to pour it through these holes in the top into the pies. That will uh, then cool and set into a jelly, all hopefully around the meat, because the meat should have shrunk so that there's uh, a bit of a cavity. Uh, we'll know when it's full because the, the liquid will bubble out at the top. And then we're just going to put them in the fridge till tomorrow, Saturday morning. And then at some point tomorrow we'll cut into one and have a look at it. Right, I've made the gelatine. Um, as I said, I had. There's my little cup holder there. I put it into a smaller vessel and I'm just going to pour it. Actually, you've got to hold it in your hand, otherwise, you can't get a good, accurate pour. I'm pouring this gelatine into this pie, it's still warm. Been out to oven an hour or more now. It doesn't matter if you spill any on the top because traditionally, there's always bits of jelly on the top. You've got to just keep resting it, letting it soak in. This is taking a lot, this one, which is good. Ah, it's just, I'm gonna put it there. Get the next one. While that's settling, that one. Hope you can see it. And just pour it in. This will cool overnight in the fridge. And then tomorrow I'll cut into it. Should be a nice layer of jelly around the meat, which is there. The jelly is there to keep it moist. Oh, they're taking a lot of jelly, these. I like a lot of jelly on my pies. As I said earlier, traditionally they made jelly with just boiling pig's trotters up, and you've got your natural gelatine out of your pig's trotters. I'm not going to film any more. I have another four to do, and I'll keep leaving them 10 minutes, then going back and trying to get some more in. You get the idea. So I'll catch up with you now, probably tomorrow morning. Well, it's Saturday morning. Um, we're going to cut into the pie. The jelly should have set. We're going to cut it down the middle. And as you can see, the meat's pink. 
I'll just cut it again, we can't eat it that size. And I'm going to put it on a plate, a couple of pieces for you, for the uh, money shot as they say. And of course, the pork pie always goes with a, a pint of beer or a glass of beer. And you can have it with uh, your favourite chutney, this is Branston pickle, you could have pickle lily, whatever you like, and mustard. So I'll cut a piece, and just try it for you. I'll eat it without, you can have it without. Oh, the jelly. There's plenty of jelly around there. Mmm, I'm getting the taste of the jelly, it's lovely. Bit of mustard on it, if you like mustard. Absolutely delicious. Homemade pork pie. Shouldn't speak with your mouth full, I know all that. Sorry about that. And of course, I'll end it on a note having a drink of actually it's homemade beer, which I make myself. So cheers everybody. Excellent. Ideal accompaniment. So thanks for listening and watching. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, and I hope it's been informative. Uh, so, goodbye and thank you.